Hi. Today we're going to be starting our first tutorial on DC circuits and uh, the first thing that we're going to be learning about is the basics which is the series and parallel circuits and voltage divider rule and current divider rule. This is a fairly easy, the simple basic format of how to solve a normal circuit and then later on after this video we're going to, we're going to be starting with methods of analysis. Okay, so to start off, the voltage divider rule is the first rule that we're going to be learning about. This is a really simple rule. This is the formula for it. If you want to find the voltage of R1 or R2 or R3, then this is the formula. So voltage of R2, for example, would be Vr2 equals R2 by total, vo total resistance, R1 plus R2 plus R3 into EMF, the total voltage, so E. So this is, this is the formula for this. If you want to find the voltage of R3, then Vr3 equals R3 by R1 plus R2 plus R3 into the total voltage, so EMF, that is. Okay, and for the current divider rule, now you will notice in this case is that voltage divider rule applies when the circuit is in a series format. Series is like this, like side by side or something. And parallel is like this, when they are like opposite or across each other. So voltage divider rule fairly just works mostly for our series, series circuits. I mean, when the resistors are arranged in series format and the current divider rule works when the resistors are arranged in parallel format. So, uh, for this, and also the current divider rule works when there are two resistors across each other. For example, if there was another resistor like R3, then what you have to do is you would have to convert either R1 or R2 or R2 or R3 or R1 or R3 into parallel. You would have to make them together. You would have to join one of, uh, one of the pairs and then you can do it again. So, suppose this is R2, R3. This is the parallel of R2, R3 and then we are finding the total resistance, I mean the total, uh, sorry, total current for this, I mean not the total current, the current across this. So in general, the current divider rule is like this. If you want to find the current across any resistor, what you have to do is, I suppose you want to find the current across I1. So I1 equals, so I1 equals I, uh, what you call it, um, RT, R, I1 equals R2 into R1 uh, divided by R1 plus R2 into the total current I. So it will be the opposite. So if we want to find I2, it will be R1 by R1 plus R2 or the total, total resistance into I. So this is the formula for this. You would, if you want to find the current across this, then you would have to take the resistor opposite to this, divided by the total resistance, uh, and then multiply it with uh, the current, the total current. And again, if you want to find the voltage across, suppose, well, let me erase this, uh, the current across R2, then what you have to do is R1 by R1 plus R2 into I. So it's like you have to take the opposite resistors and then divide it with the total resistor and then multiply it with the total current. All right. So now let's look at this one example. Uh, yeah, let's look at this example of solving a series and parallel circuit. Now we all know what a series and parallel circuit is, right? I mean, series is when this, the, the, there's just one common point between resistors and then parallel is when there are two common points. You will get to identify, it's kind of hard to identify which, one, which resistors are in series and which are in parallel when there's a really complicated circuit. For example, maybe this one. This is not too complicated, but this is one of them. So it will be hard to realize which one is series and parallel. So, well, after doing this example, maybe this is a, your concept will be clearer a little bit. We all know what's the formula of series and parallel. We've learned it in grade 9 or 10 or, you know, grade 8 or whatever. I think grade 9. <laughs> grade 9 is a safe bet. Anyway, so this is the formula. When we have just two, two resistors in parallel, that time we can apply this formula. Otherwise, when there are more than one resistors in parallel, then we have to apply this formula. So 1 by RT, which is the total resistance, equals 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus dot 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 1 by Rn. And for series, it's the most simple. You just add up all the resist resistance. All right, so let's start up with this. Let's simplify the circuit. First, what we can do is we can, we know that these two are in series. So 2 plus 10, we have, we just have, uh, 2 plus 10, we have 12. So we could just erase this and make this one whole thing.
All right, so this is 12, 12 ohm. And then we have this whole circuit over here. So let me get my calculator. We're going to have to do a little bit of calculations here. All right, so uh, 2 plus 10, uh, we have 12. And then after that, we can see that 12 and 24 are in parallel. So let's make these two in, let's, let's calculate the parallel of this, the, these two. So uh, 24 into 12 by 24 plus 12. So we get 24 into 12 divided by 24 plus 12. We get 8 ohm, 8 ohm here. All right, so we have this part of the circuit left. Now we have to simplify further. Now the question says that you have to find the P, uh, what you call, you just have to simplify the circuit and find out the total resistance and the total vo uh, total current. So we know that total current will be found out by I equals V by R. So if you just find the total, we know the total voltage, which is 24 volt, we just have to find the total resistance. All right, so uh, after this, we can simplify this two also because these two are in series. So two plus eight, we have 10 ohm. So let's just raise this. So we have 10 ohm over here. All right, so now we can identify which, which uh, circuits are in series and parallel. Uh, Look at this. This one has one common point, all right, and this is another common point. So 12 and 12 ohm, these two resistors are in parallel so because this is one common point, one common junction between these two resistors, and this is one common junction between these two resistors. So 12 and 12 are, uh, since they are both in parallel, so we can write, that, write it down as just one, uh, what you call, one, uh, one resistor, one combined resistor, and it will be, 12 into 12 divided by 12 plus 12. After you get a hang of how to you know, calculate, you'll see that when there are two similar numbers of uh, parallel resistors, it just becomes, the, the total resistance just becomes half. So the half of 12 is six. So this will be just six ohm. So the new simplified circuit, let's just draw it over here. The new simplified circuit will be this. This is 24 volt, seven ohm, and four ohm and then 6 ohm and then this was 10 ohm so this is 10 4 6 7 24 all right now it will be really easy to uh, simplify this so this is 10 and this is also 10 because 6 plus 4 is 10 so 10 into 10 divided by 10 plus 10 will be 5 like i said when there are two similar numbers Two similar valued resistors and they're in parallel they just the total resistance just becomes half of that number so 10 divided by 2 will become 5 so the the simplified version will be then 24 this is 7 and then this is 5 so 5 7 24 therefore the total uh, voltage is i mean total current is i equals v is 24 divided by 7 plus 5 equals 2. Equals so this is the total current. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the total current. I'm sorry, I didn't notice that this was, uh, this was not in view. So after uh, what you called uh, dividing, I mean, after uh, uh, doing this part of the calculation after simplifying it like this, we just get two ampere as the total current for this whole for this whole circuit, which was before shown. I mean, I did uh, the simplifications, and this was what we got. So yeah, uh, this was how this is how we calculate. I mean, this is how we find the common points. So this is how we identify when two C, two uh, two resistors are in parallel or not. We have one common point here and one common point was here. So that's how we identify the 12 and 12 were indeed in parallel. And otherwise, you can see it with your own eye when when some circuits are parallel. Here, we can't say that 10 and 4 are in parallel because there's one whole, one register here. So that's why we couldn't calculate. So we had to simplify this first and then identify what would have happened after combining these two resistors. 
So I hope you understood the first tutorial on voltage divider and current divider rule. Please feel free to ask some questions if you have any. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, good luck.